it says we're on. I can't ever find it. Let's see. Turn your sound. Okay, I found it. Okay, we snuck on a minute early and um, just to sneak in and get set up for a little bit early. Oh, I don't have my chat window up. Where's my, there, my comments window so I can see when people come on. When you come on, remember to click the link for Ecamm so I can see your name. I see Patricia and Barbara watching. Um, I see Deanna, huh? Well, I it, I saw that it said they were watching. Hey, Deanna. Be sure and click the Ecamm link so that I can um, see names if y'all don't mind. We've got um, Eddie from Wyoming. Barbara says, hi, Sharon. But I have my phone on so I can see names even if it's not on Ecamm. So Ecamm um, is the program that I use because I bring my Mac up here, my big Mac screen, my big Mac computer. Um, and that's why it needs you to click the link so that I can see your Facebook username. If I was on a PC, that wouldn't be the case. Hey, Chandra. Hi, Kathy. Yeah, I can read those names though now. So I don't need your commentary over there, Mr. Wilson. No, I don't. 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 Do we also need to comment? Um, no, Kathy, I see your name. If you've clicked on the link, um, then Ecamm will take your Facebook name so I can read it on my screen. Um, you don't have to comment, um, but if you choose to comment, then it shows me your name instead of just saying Facebook user. Hi, Marie. So, um, so that's why I like you to click that link because I do, I'm watching on my phone because on my phone, on actual Facebook, it shows me your name, but on my Mac, unless you click the link, I don't see your name. So it just eliminates me having to look back and forth. That's all. Do you see Patricia from Georgia? Um, I do on my phone, but not on my Mac. So that tells me you haven't clicked the link up there. And again, it's not necessary. It's not a hundred percent necessary. It just keeps me from looking back and forth. That's all. Um, let's see. I think I've said hi to everybody that I've seen come on. Uh, I don't. Yeah, I think I've said hi to everybody so far. So tonight we are um, going to create, just create, uh, yes, Peggy, I see, uh, yes, I see you on the screen, Peggy, so you must have clicked the link. Thank you. So tonight we're going to do a nested set with a, um, a different rim template than what I've used before, and I'm going to do it with a variety of my rolling pins um, so that you can see with a nested set doing multiple different textures, but kind of keeping a theme uh, is really awesome. Hey, Nancy and Karen um, and Sharon. So Sharon, I was going to send out your order today and then there was a second order. And then I, when I went to do your label, I saw a third and a fourth. So I held your package back so that we can make those other two orders and stick them all in together. So you should see that um, coming tomorrow. Hi, Diane. So, I'm going to get started because it's 534. I want to make sure that I get through the videos. Um, hey, Stacy, I want to make sure I get through the videos for you and then we can even chat more. And remember, by doing it this way, if you have a question, 
Um, I will answer those between videos if I don't just type a comment back to you. If it's a quickie, um, then I'll just type a comment back to you. Um, did you put my two orders together? Um, Barbara, I don't know off the top of my head. I just happened to remember hers because I just got done doing that. I'm so sorry. Hey, Diane. Hey, Susan. All right, let me put the first video on. We are going to start with, um, hi, Mary. We're going to start with rolling out a rolling pin, and then we're going to do a four-piece, <laughs> one four-piece, four-piece nested set that uh, really turned out cute. So here goes the first video. Remember, you have a comment. Put it in the comments, and I'll uh, answer it or answer it from the um when we go back live. And hi, Heidi from Canada, your favorite time of the week. Oh, oh that's awesome. All right, here we go. Okay, I have rolled out my clay. It is B mix, about a quarter of an inch. I've actually compressed it on both sides, but I'm going to do that. Whoops, stay put. I'm going to do that now as well. I do use a printer's mat, so I don't get canvas marks, but it still needs to be compressed. All right, now, first thing we're gonna do is roll out my new Let It Snow pin. This is let it snow, and I'm going to tell you, it is snow crazy. Snow crazy. So I'm going to roll this. Now, when I roll, I don't use the handles because I get a better impression. These things, the barrels are 12 inches long, and the metal bar that goes inside is, you know, just a small metal bar. So when you're pressing down on both ends, that bar is going to flex, and it's going to hamper your rolling. I also typically put this on a coffee table below me so that I can get deep, even pressure all the way across. Because here on my work table, when I get over to the far side, I can't press as hard and sometimes I can't get the texture. And that's because I am not pressing as hard. Nothing to do with the rolling pin. So here we go. Let's roll this out. this up and look at that oh look at that texture and look how deep that is can you see the depth of that and the depth in this pen I mean that if you go any deeper you're gonna crack and burn this pen so there is let it snow Okay, so Heidi asks, would you use cornstarch to stop it sticking or is your clay dryer? My clay is pretty wet. Um, I don't know if you could see when I started to roll, it does sometimes come roll up on my pan and I just push it back down and keep rolling. Or yes, you very definitely could use cornstarch if that um, helps you. Um, I have uh, used cornstarch. I do use cornstarch with my stamps as well. Okay, so let's jump on into the making. Okay, I am going to make this four-piece nested set. The third piece is already over there drying, but they look like this. They go on the new um, oblong dual drapes, and we haven't named these yet, so if you've got ideas, throw them in the comments down below. And I haven't named this template yet either, but wait till you see it um, together. And let's see, I wanna make sure, I wanna get one of these um, poinsettias, poinsettia um, snowflakes in there. So I think I'm gonna go this direction. And then I can use it, I could probably get two out of this. I think I can, I think I'll get two out of this and I'll just go ahead and and do that since I have it right here. 
So I'm gonna ooh, went around that corner fast. I'm gonna put the brown side down just because it doesn't stick as much. I'm gonna stop and come around, but I'm not stopping in a in a corner. And then I'm gonna come around and bring it off. Now, just because I can, I'm gonna go ahead. Oh no, I can't. Nope, I can't get that on there, but that's okay. I can do something with this anyway. So I'm gonna set that aside and decide what I'll do with that later. Set that over there out of my way. Okay, so take this little baby and I'm just going to go around the edges, but look at that. So tonight's going to be showing a Christmas nested set, four piece nested set. Now I'm not going to do every single one of them. I'm not going to sit here and make every single one of the same thing, but they are going to be different rolling pin textures. So my new let it snow, let it snow, let it snow. I don't sing. I will not sing. Okay. So there's that. I could actually turn it over and do the backside right now if I wanted to as well. There wasn't much on there to do. Um, what a cute shape that is. Uh, snow cloud. How about it's a snow cloud. Looks like snow. I'm not ready for it to snow yet, but it's getting time to make our holiday gifts. Um, so what I'm going to do now is simply get my phone and put it down. And this is the smallest one. So the four piece rim templates, this is a four piece rim template and it matches in size one to four with the four piece dual drapes, any of the dual drapes. You could even use a rectangle on this. And um, so I'm gonna use these new rounded rectangles. Um, we might call them round tangles. Maybe they'll be round tangles because we have squarish and squircle. Maybe we'll call these round tangles. Unless somebody comes up with something better, I'm gonna press this in. Now, I can leave it all organic or I can decide, hey, I just want it rounded, just slightly up. You know, I could even drape this um, I could drape this over if I had had enough clay. That's what I should have done was shown you a drape. Maybe I'll do that, but I can just make it like this. This is going to be a nested set. So I certainly want to make sure I do have this up so it doesn't hit the next size down. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and what am I going to set this on? Huh. Let me... Let me take this off my thumb. And I am, that's too wide. I have a little box here. That's too wide. Ah, I have a little rectangle here. So I'm going to take this and set this right on the top of that so I can get to the bottom here. And what I want to do is just go over the bottom just real quickly, just to smooth it down. And this is a, a little bitty dish. So what I'm going to do, I have, where did I put that? Let me grab the clay I saved for this. Okay, I'm actually going to put one foot on each side because this is a big snowflake. Um, and you can see I already have four out of here because I did the ten and a half a little while ago. Because again, you don't want to watch me do all four of the same thing. So what I do is I press this down, that cuts through the clay. Then I press the little button, that gives the, um, the texture. Then I can pull it out 
and I kind of grab a hold like like this so that when I push it out I can grab it with my other hand and there is a gorgeous snowflake foot to go with my snow let it snow let it snow so I'm gonna press down now I'm gonna press the texture in be really careful with these you don't want to press and wiggle it because you're gonna break your stem off ask me how I know that so there's that now again I'll grab a hold of it like this so I can press it out and grab a hold and there's my other foot how adorable is that let me put this clay back okay now what I'm going to do with this is open up my vinegar water and um, I'm going to take a snowflake and I just kind of dipped it in there just to kind of wet this a little as I'm scoring it so that I'll be able to see it on my dish I'm going to just set that where I want it and I'm not pressing it down or it'll stick and I'm just going to do the same on this one get this get this all scored and wet so that then I want my snowflakes to go the same direction so now what I'm going to do is I see where that was so I'm going to just kind of score that and take my little craft brush and dip it in and wet that I can wet this again too just to be sure it's going to stick good and then just press that on and we're going to do that on the other side and score this and dip it in my vinegar water and I will go ahead and do this one again just for good measure and then I'm going to put this same direction I like to wiggle it and then I like to take my template and just kind of tap tap it a little bit and that makes sure it's level and that's it I can flip this real quick just to show you sandwich that and there's that and you can see what this looks like in here and um, you can fiddle with this you can turn it out this is the very last the very bottom one so maybe you want it to flip out just a little and now while that's up you can go I'm holding my finger under here for support you can go around here in these little indents and make sure they're rounded so you don't have cracking I like to round them with my finger and this is way too soon to be doing this you see how floppy this clay is but I just want to show you the whole process and then I'm gonna I'm gonna fiddle with it put it back upside down I wouldn't be doing this this quite this soon but but see how I'm going in every indent because I want that nice and rounded I don't want a crack and it doesn't take much but it's worth the added insurance for sure So I always do that and I think I'm going to curl this one just a bit and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take and I'm gonna put this back on and I'm going to set this back upside down so it can be drying in this position for a bit just until the sides stiffen up and once the sides stiffen up then I'm going to flip it over and take that form out so it doesn't shrink and crack there as well. Okay, let's see. We had some questions. Um, round tangles is good. And you know, I, after I did this video, I did put them up on the website. And you know, 
I just don't even remember what I called them. Do you remember what, I call, what we called them when we actually put them up? Elegant round tangles. I think we call them elegant round tangles. I will have to go double check because you know, it's been a few minutes and I forgot. Um, yes, I, I'm reading. Okay, so Leslie says, where, where would you put the little drain if it was a soap tray? Leslie, you can choose to put it anywhere you want. You could do little holes like a berry dish, you could cut a little um, circle in there. Wherever you would like your holes to be, they can go. Deanne says she makes soap dishes for a cute little store that sells handmade soaps, and this will be perfect. Yeah, they would make perfect little soap dishes. And Miss Stacy Geller says, what sizes are the rounded, elegant oblong? They are the exact same sizes as all of our other sets are for our dual drapes. Um, the sizes are all listed with them on the website, but it's the exact same size as we always have. And Stacy Geller also asked, is that the stadium rectangles rim template? Yes, ma'am, it is. Um, that's what I called the rim template, but I don't remember what I called the rectangle dual drape forms. Um, Carla says, love that shape, round rectangle. Hello from Montana. Who is from Montana? Oh, that's Liz Wise Mertens. Hi, Liz. And hi, Liz. Two Liz's. All right, so let's jump into, I think I got everything. Uh, Melody, yes, it is a new pin. Um, let's jump into the next one, next video. Rounded Elegant Oblong. You know what? We'll, call, call on the website? Well, Deanne just looked on the website and she said it says rounded elegant oblong. Is that what we named it? Uh, under the dual drapes, it's classified elegant round tangle. They may be looking at Look under the dual drapes, Deanne. It should say, what is it saying? Elegant rounded round tangles. Round. Elegant round tangles under the dual uh, drapes. Yeah, the rounded elegant oblong, that's in the push plates. This is different. Those push plates, guys, the push plates are a little tiny um, and they're only a half inch and they're not rounded like our dual drape forms. Dual drape forms are three quarters of an inch and they're rounded so that you get that minimal look if you choose. Um, you can still drape over, you can push in. But be careful, the push plates and the dual drapes are very different. All right, let's go to this next video here. Okay, now we're gonna make the large of the four piece. And it's gonna be made exactly like the one you just saw. And I'm making this four piece set with three different Christmas textures. Um, the littlest what is in that let it snow. The um, largest is with my new Mary Trees pen. Gosh, I love this pen too. And then the, um, the middle one is gonna be with my um, The Night Before with Santa in the sleigh all um, in the sky with all the stars and all the snowflakes. And um, I chose these three. I have other Christmas pens. I have a gnome one. I have Winter Wonderland. I have Winter Butterfly. Oh, Winter Butterfly would have been gorgeous as well. Um, but I chose these three because this one is full of stars and little dots. And... Um, this one has stars and little dots and my snowflake let it snow is full of snowflakes and stars and dots and poinsettias and all kinds of stuff so i'm gonna roll this one out and again i roll pressing down and i like to roll with it below me but with the cameras i have to do it up here so i sometimes can't get as good as I want because I'm not gonna get up on anything. I might fall. Okay. 
Okay, so as I get over to the far side, um, I didn't finish rolling because it was rolling off the edge. But look at that. So there is Mary Trees. And again, you can see, I mean, the depth is amazing. And if you look in here, I mean, look at the depth of this. Any deeper, I might catch my place on fire because it is wood. Wood and fire. Okay. So this one, I love the swirly tree and all of these. And I could actually, I could get two on here if I don't go for the swirly tree. Oh, that makes me sad. You know what? I'm going to, eh, I'll just miss part of it so I can get two. No sense wasting the clay. So I'm going to go around this and I'll just have two of this one. And come around the other side. I use my needle tool because it glides on these quarter inch thick templates. But you can use a knife, whatever works best for you. Um, there's no, there's no one way better than the other. It's what works for you is the best way. Now, whoops, dropped my clay on the floor. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and slide this over here and um, slide this one out of my way. My largest one, I do make just slightly thicker because it's going to be the bottom. And uh, I'm going to go around and set this piece aside. I'll use it in a while on something else or make another dish. But um, since I had extra, I might as well just cut it while I'm here. Okay, so this one... Um, Oh, I don't know. I love, oh, look at this. They're almost identical. Can you see that? Look at the, the swirly tree. They're almost, almost identical. I'm going to go set this one aside for a minute. Okay. So now I'm going to take my sponge and just, as always, go around these edges. Again, I like to make sure these are well-rounded. And sometimes it's easier to just do it right here while you're, while you're doing this. Don't forget them because first time you forget them, you're going to know it. It'll crack on you and you'll go, oh, she said, don't forget them. So I'm going to go around and I'm going to get the back side. that back side. Again, I like to I like to get in those little corners, make sure they're well rounded. This is such a cute shape. So many things could be made with this. These could be even little rectangle dinner type plates for kids or serving plates um, in the holidays. Uh, there's so many things. These are our normal rim template sizes. Um, and they match our four piece dual drapes. Any shape you would want to go with this, the sizes will work. Smallest to largest. They are designed that way. There you go. How cute is that? Move this out of my way. Not sure if that's going to show in my my recording. Let's see that one didn't stop. Okay, now I'm going to grab my foam and I'm going to very gently lift my piece and set it down here on the foam and grab my largest. And see how they all fit perfectly? One through four, smallest to largest in the four-piece set. 
and I'm going to press that in. Now this one is the bottom, so I don't want to press it up too awful much because I want it to stay out and hold the rest of the set. So what I'm going to do is flip this over. I probably will need to put something on there. I probably will. So I'm just going to stick my hand under here very carefully and flip that. And put this on here like so, so that this, and again, I don't want this one pressed in too much. I want it to go out because it's going to be the very bottom of the stack. So I am going to see if I can get you into the screen. Let me, let me scoot this down. There you go. So I am going to go around this gently. Just, I don't want to squish my texture, but I also want to make sure this is flat on my form. Okay, and then I'm going to move this off the foam. If I get back to my work table, and I have a little piece of clay set beside here, and on this one, I am going to have four feet, four feet. So I'm going to press it down, press down the knob, pull it out, and then just kind of shoot it out into my hand. There's one. Flakes, like the two edges touching, which puts these two in the middle. I just, I don't know. I just like it. You can put them anywhere you choose. I just like them. To, I just kind of stick it in my vinegar water just enough to kind of wet the bottom. Press some in here. Okay. And then press them out and kind of, kind of get them symmetrical. And down to the bottom. We're going to do the same thing. And, um, I do, if there's a lot of vinegar water slip, whatever you choose to use, I do like to go around and take that out of there. And clean that up while I have it here. So that'll help seal that join in, keep it from lifting. One left. I, um, I do it better with a craft brush. You could also do it with a rubber tip tool. Whatever works for you again is what works. The steps are what's important that you do all the steps to keep your piece working. And there is that. I am tipping this out just a little because this, again, is the bottom one and I want it to um, hold the rep. My hands on the screen look dark and dirty, but they're not in person. I don't know why that is. So I'm gonna go set this aside and let it stiffen up and do the other two and then we'll come back with a four piece set the other two are also gonna okay so let's see i had questions let's see leslie i sent you i did get that at amazon um and i will add a link to here i'll find them on amazon and add a link Rachel, hi, and I, I answered your questions. Heidi, I think I answered yours. Deanne, you have these? Yeah, they're great. Um, they make excellent little pennants too. Um, and they come in different sizes. You can get the little tiny ones to make earrings with a matching pennant. 
Um, let's see, I've answered the vinegar water. Um, I'm out of magic water and it's fast. 50-50 though, don't do more vinegar than 50% because otherwise it'll eat your clay. Um, let's see. Yes, they are fondant cutters. I'm not sure who asked that. Deanne. Oh, Dan, Diane did. And okay, so I want to hit the next two videos real quick before we run out of time. So here we go. Okay, I wanted you to see me um, roll out this last pen. This is the night before. And um, <clears throat> so I wanted you to see that. I'm going to do the same thing I've always been doing each pen. I'm going to scoot this back where I can get my downward momentum. There. Look at this baby. The night before, Santa's all in the sky and the houses and the reindeer and the steeples and the chimneys blowing smoke. There was all kinds of stuff. Trees, smoke, little deer down here, Santa, the moon, the stars, the snowflakes, you name it, it's in this pen. So I wanted you to see me roll this out and I will, um, I will make the last dish off the air. Oh. I'm sitting here watching my phone and I'm like, oh, I'm on the screen. <laughs> so that's the third pin that I'm using in this four piece set. So let me um, get to the final piece and then we'll talk about it. Thank you, Deanne, for adding that link. Love it. Okay, so here are our four little dishes. Look at Let It Snow. So that's the little one. The next size up is um, the night before. The night before Christmas. You can see where I stamped my maker's mark, so be careful. And then I had the third size also be Let It Snow. I mean, look, that is just amazing. And then the biggest is my merry trees and so now I'm gonna assemble them so let me let me do this so let's see what can I do here well I'm gonna put this in my hand I want you to see I have five snowflakes on the back of this one I needed to put one in the middle because it was sagging a little. This one is a little stiffer. This one just has four, and that'll go right in here. They're still slightly movable, so I can actually um, move this around very easily, or <laughs> very carefully is what I should say. So there's two. And then number three also just has two snowflakes. And there's number three. So I want number two to come out just a little bit. It's too pretty stiff. I can't really bring it up. So I'll bring this one up a little. It's still a little more pliable. So there's that one. And then for the baby, look at that. What a gorgeous soap dish or put a lid on it, make a butter dish. And that's got two snowflakes as well. And that, uh, you can't get better than that. Look at that. So these are the, um, let's see, where are my, 
these are the new um, round tangle dual drapes in three quarter of an inch. This is the four piece set. And these are the, um, I don't know what we're going to call these yet. I'm going to have them up there with no name on them until we come up with a name tonight. But these make this and it is gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. And I need that wasn't rounded off and I didn't like it so I just rounded it slightly. Now I'm happy and there it is. So there's Let It Snow the night before. Put these all back on their own little plates because they need to dry a little more. So I want to disassemble and then this is, um, I put this one another let it snow that is just look at those all the snowflakes and the dots and the the little ones and the big ones and the poinsettia uh snowflake in there i absolutely i uh, love it love it and then there's my merry trees so i'm gonna leave these right here and put a little plastic over them and let them set up. I'll set this on that. And there they are. There you have it. Okay. So let's see. Nancy Jean says, Sharon, that would make a great stepping up class showing us how to do the top. Oh, Nancy Jean, you read my mind. Um, stay tuned. It's coming. For those of you that are uh, curious as to what that is, um, in my Slab to Fab group, which is my paid site, um, I have three classes, three categories of classes. Quick and easy, stepping it up, and getting adventurous. And so the lid would be not so quick and easy, but more of a stepping up. So that's what that question was all about. And um, Victorian frame form. Oh, for a name. Okay, I, I did actually go ahead and name it. It was just because I looked up what around a rectangle could be called and it said stadium because that's the shape of a stadium. I'm not keen on that. So I, I may switch that name real quick between um, these classes. Uh, let's see, what else? <laughs> Deanne, I want everything from this demo. Um, and I think I've got all of the questions. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. Okay, so I think I answered all the questions that I see. If anybody has any other questions, what I'm trying to do, um, because we're getting towards the middle or towards the end of October, I'm trying to get my Christmas stuff out there, kind of bam, 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 just so, surely it's okay that you're late, you're here. That's what's important. I'm trying to get my Christmas stuff out there so that then we could scalloped corner rectangle. Well, I like that too. Um, so that then we can just start doing projects and giving you ideas of how to use them, but so that you can get them in time to do your Christmas projects. Because my gosh, you blink, and it's gonna be Christmas. Um, I feel like I lost a whole month with everything going on in my family. Um, but what I did do was um, to take my mind off things I would create. So I have a bunch of stuff created. So um, I'm, I'm trying to help you get ready for Christmas and your Christmas fairs, your Christmas shows and all of that kind of stuff. <clears throat> Sorry about that, I had to get a drink. Yeah, I think most people have been working on Christmas already, and I feel like I'm behind um, due to everything. I would have had it out a little sooner, but for those of you Slab the Fabbers, come on over to the Slab group here in about 15 minutes, and we're going to do another holiday project, only this will be more of a um, Thanksgiving-type project, um, but it's going to show you a new trick. Uh, 
Patricia. No, I'm. Um, why do I not see that? So you, so maybe. So Patricia, um, you want to look under dual drape, and they're called um, they're elegant round rectangles, um, and they're the dual drapes. They're the thick three quarter of an inch because on those you can drape them over or push them in. If you get the push plates, they're little tiny, they're not the same size, and they're half the thickness. Um, yes, I like that too. So we might jump on and rename that really quick. Um, scalloped corner rectangle, Victorian frame. Where did you see vintage? Oh, it looks vintage. Vintage scalloped rectangle. Ooh, I like that too. Yeah, that's Barbara. Okay, so we are going to go for tonight. We will see you next week. If you have questions on orders, please message me. Well, actually, it's best to email me at info at Sharon Hoppy Designs. I don't always see every comment on Facebook. Order questions and things like that really don't pertain to everybody. Um, so email me and um, if you have an order question or if you just have a general question unless it's something that does pertain to the group um, remember that vintage scalloped rectangle I will see you all next week oh the names of the forms used tonight are elegant round tangles and they're under dual drapes vintage Scallop rectangle. Um, oh, good. I'm glad I hit some of your favorite things. Come on over to the slab group. You're going to love that as well. Oh, vintage came from Heidi. Oh, vintage came from Heidi. Okay. So, vintage came from, so we may have a 2 4 deal here. All right. See you guys all next week.